I've um, arrived at my next bed sit and um, I think this is what I love so much about pet sitting, um, helping out friends, that kind of thing, is I'm seeing the Marni, or at least this bit of the Marni, from many different, different angles. And at the moment, I'm in Exohori, looking after um, two cats and two dogs and having a lovely time. And um, I'm seeing the Taigatos from a different angle again. So let me show you. Exohori, and you can look straight over to the Taigatos. And when you look over there, you can see some houses, and that's actually the other side of the gorge, looking towards Tilia. So, a month ago, we were there, staying in a friend's house, and um, yeah, now I'm on the other side. Good morning, lovely people. Start of a new week. It's Monday. It's going to be a busy day, we hope. Um, the builders who are going to come and fix that bit of the wall that is not um, secure will come today, we think, to fix our wall that's broken. So there's a piece of wall missing and I'll show you in a minute. Uh, it's just a piece of land where it caved in and they repaired past, part of the wall, but not all of it. So, um, And that's one of our first jobs just to keep this little one there in the plot and keep her safe big one is not so bad but this one is just terrible because she'll just go everywhere so this is the other plot um and simon's already done an awful lot of work here because one of the things that we needed to get rid of first of all is this incredible beast so this is a prickly pear which was here so right by the entrance of the kitchen and it's lethal so prickly pear prickly pear is a is a, a cactus that you see a lot in the mediterranean but their spines are lethal for dogs and for humans yes, that's one of the things that's going to have to go from the plot because of injury danger so and then we can walk up and down to this bit of the land and that is the part of the wall that needs to be repaired this will now be done today and then we will put some more fencing on top um, and the same along there so that we can really keep our dogs safe. We do have one slight problem though and it's um, a problem that's getting bigger and bigger in Greece in general. It's not just the Mani, it's not just the Peloponnese, it's just especially the islands are a real issue. That's our water tank that should be refilling every day and it's not because at the moment we are on a schedule of getting one hour every five days because there's a real water shortage in the area or in Greece even but here in the Mani it's particularly dire and so we have a thousand litres of empty tank and we're trying to sort that today so it's another reason why we couldn't start building work we need water for the cement and that's just not there so as a Northern European person, um, and especially when you've lived in the UK, which is obviously very wet, having a problem with a drought is just something that um, has really made me appreciate water and the fact that you can just turn the tap on and there is water coming out of the tap. It's really made me um, be very grateful for that and appreciate that. So we have to actually just really ration our water output so even washing up showering washing only once a week at the moment because we just haven't got the water in the tank to do that so one wash load in this washing machine is 85 liters that goes through so that's almost a tenth of that tank so with that in mind 
is one of the things that I'm really trying to sort out now is get a good grip on how much water we need and we'll probably need 3,000 to 4,000 litre here on site and um, where to put the tanks because we have to pump it and so everything has to be on one level and we have so many terraces but there's nothing really level so where to put the other tanks, two tanks, we're not quite sure. So we're now waiting for a friend of ours who's going to fetch some water with his pickup truck and bring it here and we have some water butts here which we're going to fill so at least the builders can actually get on with their job. So I'm on the way to the um, builder's merchant now and going to get some stuff. I need more water butts, which we couldn't get yesterday um, for our water delivery. And then I also need um, sturdy buckets to mix cement and that kind of thing. The builders that we've got, they're a bit spread a bit thinly. They've got several projects on and all their tools are spread across. So um, we said we'd just go and get our own buckets because we need them at some point. We're gonna be um, doing so much work ourselves even just pointing in the stones and that kind of thing. So uh, we're even thinking about getting a cement mixer ourselves because we'll need it, so. So I have buckets. They sadly didn't have the really strong ones that I need. Um, they're due in this week. So I hope these will do. Well, they'll have to do for the moment anyway. So, and now I'm off to take the buckets back and then I'm gonna go and see to the dogs in the shelter. So that's, uh, I'm on the rotor for today and tomorrow. So that's my task after this. So I'm at the dogs, just gonna go and give them a walk. And I can see that the uh, fencing, the new fencing has been put in. So that's great news as well. So we usually walk the compound dogs about half an hour to an hour, um, twice a day. It's just so they get used to walking on leads and are familiar with the routine of walking and just to give the mental stimulation and physical stimulation as well of course so we really do try and keep our rescue dogs happy in the uh, shelter. So the water has arrived and uh, I'll show you how it all works in Greece. It's very uh, manual but it functions and you know it makes you appreciate how people get around problems here it's really good there we go. Yeah, of what it looks like transporting a cement mixer job today I'm filming everything <laughs> Simon's busy the builders are busy now I'm busy too but yeah different way so it's good to see so much action actually because we've been sat still and waiting for such a long time it feels really positive to actually be doing stuff
Thursday. <clears throat> Just looking at the work. So you can see where he's kind of done his stuff at the top and this is the last bit they just need to finish off and the bottles you can see there is they're just space holders for the um what's it called the poles so there you go so simon has already been sanding the rest of the floor and you can see the difference and yeah it's the floor is looking fab, I'm really pleased with this. We wanted to keep it rustic, but we wanted to get all the horrible marks out, so watermarks and that type of thing. Found the first little critter in our house. So we have a tiny Scorpio. Tiny Scorpion. There we go. There we go. That's it. So to dispose of him. We always try and save them. They don't mean any harm, but they do sting pretty bad. So, bless him. Tiny little thing. So, just gonna let him go at the back of our land. So, yeah. There we go. Bye-bye, little Scorpio. Have a good life. Everything's different. I'm not home, um, so I can't document everything, which I'm really hacked off about, to be fair. Um, it's just, you know, we're doing some really interesting stuff at home, and yeah, I'm not there, so and Simon can't do it all, bless him, he can't film and, and do the stuff that he's doing. So, but this week we're going to take you along one of the most spectacular gorges here. I'm just on the way there now. So I'm a real ocean seagull, right? I just love being near the sea and I just love having water around me, whether that's um, sea or river actually. But when I'm in the mountains, there is a really, really special feeling of this, I would almost say empowerment. It's just so spectacular and you can, really sit in the mountains and feel how you know all the small stuff that we swept all the time is so insignificant it's you know these are so vast and majestic and I think that's what I always love about coming into the mountains um, it's just this feeling of awe and like wow you know sea is I mean the sea gets rough but especially here in the Mediterranean the sea is just beautiful and, 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 you know, a calming influence. But this is, this is groundedness. This is power. This is strength. And I think that's what I always feel when I'm in the mountains. So it's, um, it's just so raw and so, so incredible.
And my morning walks are just really <clears throat> a time for me to gather my thoughts and get some fresh air, obviously, but there's plenty of that here. But it really is a bit of me time, um, get some steps in and yeah, just think ahead into the day about what I'm going to do and what needs to be done. And I think that's one of the things that I love so much. Um, about my walks right now they help me put everything into perspective and just you know think the day think about the day ahead and it yeah it kind of brings me focus I think that's the word I'm very unfocused at the moment as you can see because I have to really think about my words and I get into overwhelm really quickly and, you know, there are people who um, commented and said, well, you must feel really calm because your video exudes that. And it's like, no, I don't. Um, you know, I try and have a mindset of everything's going to be all right. But both Simon and I do often feel like, oh, my God, what have we done now? You know, we've started over so many times together in the six short years that we've been around uh, together. and. Um, in you know enjoyed life together but whenever we were really set we kind of had a, a morning ritual which is you know which I find really valuable so it's just this going inwards for a little time um, just sitting in quiet quietude journaling um, all those little things that help you put everything back into perspective and because everything is so disjointed and disrupted still for us even you know the, the me being away coming back um it's just so different for us and I haven't got that routine that kind of um the way I start my day that gives me a solid foundation does that make sense I think that makes sense um so the walks really give me that I they you know nature soothes me and helps me just feel karma basically so um the dogs have gone way ahead bless them <laughs> I'd better go and uh go and find them <clears throat> this is the Viros Gorge and then you can see it goes down pretty steep so then it winds its way down to Karamili but you can't see that from here that there is Pedino you can see that just on the horizon and then this is last bit of Teria and Cataficio just sits here so um, yeah fascinating so beautiful many more shots like this this week so you can see the path going all along there and then it goes around and then it goes down goes into the gorge and then it comes up on that little wide angle because it's just so much more dramatic than this is incredible um, it's even more incredible than the other side almost I have just found the most beautiful dog walking around. He's so hungry. He's a stray, obviously. So, so skinny. There are so many stray dogs around Exohori, it's just heartbreaking. But this is a beautiful, beautiful boy.
Hey, baby. Are you okay? He's shy, but he's not super scared, so I'm hoping maybe over the next couple of days I can get to know him a bit better. Come on. Come on. It's okay. No? Staratus of Dabena. He's got his tail right between his legs, so he's worried. Do you want to come? Come. Hey. You okay? Do you want some more? Hmm? Do you want some more? Very nervy, aren't you? Used to humans, though. It's licking me now. Hey. What's this? Good boy. He's a youngster still. Probably not even a year yet, actually. Hey. Huh? What do you think? Are you worried about the dogs? Well, if you hang around, I'll try and feed you up, okay? Good morning, lovely people. Last video of the week that I'm going to take. It's Sunday morning and I'm just out with the dogs. And... Um, yeah, it's been, a, it's been quite a restful week for me, actually, in the end. Yesterday I worked a lot on the vlog, as I had been doing this the days before. Um, but then my phone crashed and I lost it all, so I had to start again. So forgive me if there's a few glitches in the video. Um, <laughs> it was a bit stressful, to be fair. Um, and yeah, and then next week... Um, We've got another curveball. So um, Simon's dad passed away uh, a week ago and a little bit more actually. But So we've been preparing to um, get him back to the UK so he can go and see his family, be with his family in this time. Um, and that means I'm going to be home alone from next week. Um, and... Yeah, so you'll be seeing me doing a lot on my own. Um, Simon won't be there and it's kind of, you know, just, yeah, a really topsy-turvy time. It was just another one of those curveballs where we were like, oh gosh, you know. Um, and a sad time, of course. So, um, yeah, so next week we'll be, uh, Simon will still be here and we'll be beginning the work on the kitchen. So that's exciting. We'll be, um, we'll be taking in two new foster pups as well so that's kind of really exciting that's going to be mayhem I'm sure because they've been living outside most of the time so they don't know anything but they had nowhere to go with them so we said we'll take them in and uh, and yeah and we're going to start work on the kitchen so if you've made it this far thank you so so much for watching um, we're so grateful for all your comments your likes your subscribes um, I could have never imagined that you know, once we're back and I just start vlogging again, that things would just grow so quickly. We're just delighted with that. And yeah, I wish you a really good week um, here from Greece. Enjoy, make the best of it, and we'll see you next time. Take care. Lots of love.